Hello and welcome to Platypus Scotsman. This is another update uh, on mostly the slums and then I'm going to answer some questions. So what I've decided to do with the slums is I printed some greeblies, uh, lots of greeblies, and I'm starting to cure them and so on and so forth. But I want the lower, I want the lower section of the slums to be more up to date, more established. I want the lower level to be more upscale than the rest of it. So I'm printing walls for that very reason, so I can I can do do all that assembly, and then on top of that, I'll do the foam core and the chipboard and things like that, and then I'll slap more greeblies on up there. So the main level is going to be more, you know, like shops, uh, food, uh, different things like that, and then the up will be like where people live, and it's just kind of been slapped on top of it, kind of like the idea of like in Blade Runner, and I think one of the Star Wars episodes and. Uh, and uh, I had another show off the top of my head too, but I can't remember now, that they go on the bottom level and that's kind of where everything takes place and it looks nicer, well, nicer than the rest of the area and then everything else will be that way. So I want some walls. I don't want to use a lot of my Greeblies out of my models because if I do that, I'll devastate my Greebly resources for uh, other projects. I'll, I won't have any, well, I just, I'll, I'll devastate my model supply as far as my Greeblies are concerned. I didn't want to use a lot of sheet styrene either, uh, just because I know this is probably sixes as far as price is concerned. But I just wanted to do something different, and this this is also more of a, also going to be a, a backdrop. But as I start thinking about, it, I might actually do a board of this down the road. But I'm just going to print a lot of things and print greeblies, and that's kind of the idea behind that. It's going to be tier because I want to be able to have miniatures move on it, and I also want it sectional. So I want pieces that can you can move around and then. They'll all be, the tiers will all be kind of the same height, so therefore you can put bridges like these, these walkways in between uh, and things like that. So you can have miniatures move around and that's kind of the idea behind that too. Uh, anyway, let's get to some questions. So uh, Seth S asked me in the last Chronicle uh, if I would do a tutorial, if I can make trenches, a tutorial on trenches. Well, I did a tutorial a long time ago. Oh. I did a tutorial a long time ago uh, in North Quarter Magazine, uh, some trenches, and I've also done some other trenches that I'll show uh, as just as examples, uh, just like snow and bombed out, uh, jungle and primitive, ad hoc, and so on and so forth type trenches. So my question to you, Seth, is, is do you want a tutorial where it's above ground like this to where it can be placed on the board, or do you want, or do you, or you think of more of a tutorial that the board surface is here and it, sink, it sinks down into the board. Is that, is that what you're kind of thinking? So anyway, if you can let me know uh, what, kind, what, you're, what you're thinking as far as that's concerned, what kind of uh, tutorial you're thinking of. MS underscore from underscore N2 asked me, when I use my tandy leather tool and make uh, rivets in sheet styrene, what size of rivets they are. Uh, whether, whether they're one millimeter or 1.5 millimeter. I'd probably go closer to one millimeter or less depending on the sh thickness of the sheet styrene that I'm using, and there are several st settings on the Tandy leather uh, setting, but I usually go probably a tad smaller than one millimeter, but a lot of that depends on how thick the styrene I'm using. If it's a .04, which is mostly what I make main, main structures out of, they can be, you can, it's more forgiving than if I use point, uh, zero two inches thickness, that's not as, as forgiving, because if you punch too far through it, It'll actually crack your styrene. James Miller, uh, he asked me, why do I make everything from scratch with styrene instead of putting items on foam core? I used to do a lot more foam core than I do now. I used to do uh, very little chipboard, but it was mostly foam core. I'd make foam core structures. I did a lot of old fantasy houses actually out of foam core, and I'd slap all kinds of things on them. The reason why I got away from that is my son, Jake, uh, got me on to Adam Savage where he showed how he did old Star Wars models, uh, like the Millennium Falcon and things like that, where he used sheet styrene and they used vacuum form, which I wish I had a vacuum former, but I don't, that'd be sweet. And he would make that and then he would use greeblies, but what he did is he used uh, weld on and he used sheet styrene for a lot of the construction. And so I, I had never done that process before. And so I started doing it and I kind of just lost sight of everything else and just kind of went for it and learn, I, I just want to see how far I could push it. 
And every time I did a project, I learned more and more and more. In my two towers, I did my hypermatter reactor. I was like, I just wanted to do almost exclusively scratch build with very, and the Greeblies would take second stage to just the actual scratch build of the two towers, which I, it's one of my favorite pieces that I've done, but it took a long time. And uh, that's kind of why, but I, with this project, I'm going back to foam core. I don't want to have the whole structure out of sheet styrene. Uh, it'll be faster with foam core. Well, I don't know. I'm just going back with foam core as far as, other than the main bottom level. I still might have supports behind it. I still haven't decided. I need to have more prints before I can actually map out the bottom and kind of get, get an idea. Cause I want to kind of like, I don't have a set drawing. Cause someone asked me that too. I don't have a set drawing. Uh, I don't do that. Uh, I kind of, this kind of flows as I go. Uh, I think someone asked me on that on Facebook. I don't draw things out usually. I'll get references. I'll scroll through different things. I'll get an idea. I'll get, okay, I'll do that, but then what happens is, is I, as I'm building it, it kind of morphs and it becomes something else. I may have a set idea from that I got from a drawing or a picture or a movie or whatever, but then usually as I develop it, just kind of blossoms from there. And that's kind of what I'm doing. So I want to have, ooh, that's not the same height. Oh well, so I'm, <laughs> sorry, I got squirrel. So that's what I kind of want. I kind of want a bunch of these printed so I can kind of get a puzzle piece and kind of puzzle it out. That's what I'm going to do on the main, the main level. And then after that, it'll probably just go from there. I have some pictures of favelas that I'm going to use. Um, and then uh, just kind of uh, the slums in Ready Player One. Uh, not the slums, the stacks. Uh, I'll just kind of do that and I'll just kind of develop as I go. I had a question from K8B a while back. What's the name of my dog? Her name is Sophie. She's getting really old. We have to actually move her. When she wants to jump on stuff, we have to actually pick her up or she'll bark and uh, things like that. So she's getting old and we're just trying to uh, make her life as best, as most more, most comfortable as possible. Uh, we love the little doggy. Um, but she acts like a humog. She acts like kind of a little person sometimes. Uh, someone, I, have a do, I do have a Facebook account. If you want to friend me there, it's Platypus Scotsman. I did get a message from We Are Doomed. We Are Doomed wants to make uh, a factory out of um, for robots or mechs or whatever and they did send me, uh, uh, we are doing did send me a lot of pictures and I think you're on the right track for that uh, what I would do is I would look at modern assembly lines that use a lot of robots but then I would also look at Necromunda I would use chains I would use things that give it that more organic feel more hive mind feel that's what I would do. I would have body parts laying around. Uh, if you're going to do a, a diorama versus something you're going to play on, you just have to obviously take in consideration you have to be able to move figs. So if you have body parts, just have them off or have them low. Or, but I'd have pieces like the heads and different things like, oh crap, we don't want to use that throw away. So I'd kind of put that thought process into it that some, something is actually doing this. So not everything's going to be perfect in an assembly line. Not everything's going to be used. So you have scraps, have body parts. Uh, but I would have them in different stages of uh, assembly. But I'd have a lot of robots and a lot of things like that. And then I'd have a lot of watt cables. You can use solder. You can use hard wire, uh, depending if it's going to be attached or not, or what your ultimate goal is. But I'd have wires and things like that. You can also use jewelry wire if it's going to be a diorama. You have more forgiveness with dioramas because you don't have to use to be able to touch them. But if you use jewelry wire, you want to attach to something because it's very flexible. That's like 25 gauge. And you can pick that up like a Walmart or someplace like that. But that's kind of the idea. But I think you're on track for that. I think that uh, would look good. I'd have a lot of, in the flooring, I'd have like the, either I'd try to find some diamond plating or um, some perforated stuff like this or some perforated, oh, some perforated stuff like that to get kind of give it like, you know, fall through like a, in the ship like an aliens. I'd have a lot of pipes on the sides. Uh, you can use paper straws. You can use all kinds of things for all the, the pipe work on the sides. Uh, like, And then just put maybe little pieces of paper around it to where it's like clamped. Uh, do things like that. Just more feel, more organic. Uh, not just like smooth walls. I'd have things like that. But it also depends how much effort you want to put into it and what it's for and what the purpose is. Uh, because some of my projects, I won't lie, that I do for tutorials, I have to, ha I have, to have a cutoff spot to get them in. Now this project, I'm gonna have a lot of updates 
uh, in the chronicles of what I'm doing that may not end up in the final tutorial just because of how lengthy this project's going to be. So a lot of my updates and a lot of things I'm going to be talking about are going to be little snippets and progress reports in the chronicles to give you an idea of what I'm doing and, and the concepts behind Because so I've had people also ask me, how do I come up with ideas? And so this is just going to be one of those types of things where I'm showing ideas. And I'm printing up Greeblies that I may never use. But I'm just, just you know, I'm right now in print machine. And it's actually, I never thought, if I was to ever get a 3D printer, which was never a goal of mine, that this was the direction I wanted to take with that 3D printer, was to actually use it for Greeblies and uh, just do that. But anyway, that's pretty much it. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, if you have any more things I want you want to answer, any help with uh, or ideas or brainstorming or anything like that, put down in the comments and I'll do my best to help you out and uh, so on and so forth. If you do send me a message through Facebook or uh, Instagram, I'm going to start a uh, answering those more here uh, just so other people have a potential of using that same information and the same concepts and same ideas and the same brainstorming versus uh, doing it on there to where it's kind of hidden more and uh, not, people, not as many people can possibly get use out of it or whatever. But that's what the kind of direction I'm going. But anyway, you have a good night. Uh, hope everything, or a good day. It depends on what time zone you're in, what part of the earth you're on, what part, where the rotation is, yada, yada, yada. But you have a wonderful evening. Well, I'm just gonna say evening. It's evening, so chillax mostly. But have, have a good time. Uh, have a good time in your hobby. Do things that are enjoyable in your hobby. Don't make it over stressful like I do. And I get sidetracked easy. There's time in past videos I've said, well, I'm gonna do this next. And it's like, all of a sudden I see a squirrel, I go, oh, I'm gonna do that. So, you know, just do what makes you happy and uh, in your hobby. That's the most important thing is to have fun with it and, and enjoy it and uh, hang out with a bunch of cool people. And that's the best part of hobbying anyway is in gaming. This is the social, the, so, the social aspect. It's the people you hang out with. Uh, family, friends, or whatever that is. So, hope all that's going well for you, uh, and you have a good one. Um, my mother used to always say that, you know, every, anybody, anybody can do art, and I really believe that because I believe anybody can. That being said, you have a wonderful evening. You have a good night, and I will see you on the flip side on the next update. And bye.